Mr. Genda, and you're listening to the NBS show. Hello and welcome to the NBS show, episode number 152. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. Hey there, Ro. How are you, man? Well, been better, but I'm all right. I'm fine. We're doing great. Ah, I, I'm guessing it's one of those days. Uh, kind of, sort of, maybe. I'm mm. keeping things cool. Regardless of the situation, got to keep a positive attitude at any altitude, man. That's how one guy can roll. True, true, yes. true. That's, that's a positive outlook. That's a positive outlook. I wish I... I wish I shared that outlook with you. <laughs> But problems on my end are problems on my end. But anywho, joining us, our guest for this week is Draginda. Hello. Hello, Draginda. How are you? There's a big storm here, so let's hope I don't cut out. <laughs> This will be an interesting show if we do cut out. <laughs> Place your bets, people. Place your bets. Uh, alrighty then, alrighty then. So anyway, Draganda, before we start, I need to ask you the four important question. And question number one is, who's your favorite character? Derpy. Derpy? Wow. She's so cute. You can't resist the cute. Oh, true, 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 true. Derpy's cute, Derpy's cute. Why Derpy? I just mentioned she's cute. <laughs> just can't cute. resist the cute. Not personality or the muffins, just she's... the cuteness. Have one. She's a background character. You just like know that she likes muffins. Maybe. You're not for <laughs> us. Them existing. We know that Derpy knows that muffins exist. That's their personality traits. Anyhow, favorite episode. Pretty much any episode that has like plot that stays consistent. <laughs> um, any examples? Pretty much love almost all the two parters. I didn't like the Crystal Kingdom too much. Spike, Spike. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, how do you become a fan of the show? I just say like images pop up with them everywhere, and either people are, like loving it or hating on it. And I'm not gonna hate on something before I know if it's worth hating or not. I have an informed opinion. I'm not gonna hate on people for it before I know why I should hate it. <laughs> so you did your research then? <laughs> yeah. That's your first big mistake. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> There's no escape. I know. And also, like, I'm, like, anime and manga person, so liking things that seem kind of childish is not that weird for me. Uh, well, uh, how do I put this? Yeah, li liking ponies is one thing, liking anime is another, but, hey, as long as you're entertained and you're happy, that's the most important part. Yes. Yeah, but, like, people, like, view it as, as the same, even if it isn't the same. <laughs> From, like, social perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, talking about other people and other people's opinion, what do your family and friends think about your love for said show? I, I do have like a bunch of pony stuff in my room, and I don't think my parents have picked up if I'm sarcastic about it or not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because I am a sarcastic person, and I'm a tomboy, ah. so it's kind of confusing. <laughs> okay, so it could be sarcastic, it could be not, they've got no idea, and since you're like, hmm, yes, nice combi, nice combi. And for my friends, yeah, they know if some of them like the show, all well, their things, it's okay, but they don't care too much. All right, all right. Even though it's like, the show aren't all that hardcore into it, and like the most hardcore into it of all I know, so. So, what about your friends? Yeah, like, some of them are into it, all they think it's okay, we don't care too much, so. But I'm the most hardcore, so. All right. Thank you for answering the four important question, Regenda. And, Ro, we have housekeeping, right? Mm, but of course, of course. All right, all right. Uh, there's so much housekeeping to do. Clean the house, it's man. It's not a housekeeping, it's a mansion. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let's do this. <clears throat> you want me to do the reading? Yep, yep. Roger that. Error Free Northwest Pony Stock Musician Applications now open. Applications for Pony Stock 2015 musicians are officially open. Pony Stock is Ever Free Northwest two-day music concert. Running annually since 2012, it has proven to be one of the most amazing Mile Pony Conventions concerts in the world. We strive to bring you the forefront of the fandom music scene with dozens of artists spanning several genres of music, but we don't do it without your help. If you and or your band wants to blow the roof off with Hilton Seattle's airport and conference center this May 29th, 31st, apply at everfree.com slash events slash ponystock by March 13th. 
All types of musicians are welcome. So if you're looking to play some awesome music to a great group of music lovers, send us that application. Come make this year's Pony Stock the best one ever. We can't wait to hear what you got. Woohoo! Yay, man. Play the music. Play the music. For all you musicians out there, go apply to Everfree Northwest. They're a bunch of awesome guys, and I'm going to bet you guys that you're going to get a bunch more followers if you do apply and play live, because people love the live music. Indeed they do. And, ladies and gentlemen, we got a James Cork. Hello! What do you mean, ladies and gentlemen? We are, are we streaming? We're live. <laughs> yeah, we're rolling. We're rolling, man. I'm taking advice from the feedback, so we're rolling with it. How are you doing, man? Well, I'm doing fine. I think I might be getting sick, though. Oh, season uh, changes. It happens. Um, it, it, it can probably be that. Same here. I've been feeling lightheaded myself for a few days now. Oh, man. I've been having chest pains, and it hurts. Not the good oh, kind wow. of chest pains, mind you. There's the good kind? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you feel doki doki. <laughs> yeah. When you shave that man chest off yourself. <laughs> that pain. Not that kind. But anyway, uh, I, I hope you do, I hope you do feel better soon, James. A sick James is yeah. not a fun James. It isn't. Anywho, on to the next one. Ro. Roger that. Everfree Northwest community guest applications now open. Hello, Phillies and Gentle Colts. Everfree Northwest is pleased to announce that community guest applications are now open. Have you ever wanted to be featured as a special guest in Everfree Northwest? Well, now is your chance. Submissions slash suggestions will be open until March 31st. All submissions will be considered, but unfortunately not everyone is guaranteed to be chosen as a community guest. Much as we would like to, we do not have enough budgets nor resources to feature everyone. It does not matter how many fans a person may have or how many views or watches. Everyone is welcome to submit an application and have a fair chance at being a community guest. If you like to con be considered as a community guest at Everfree Northwest 2015, please fill out this form. If you'd like to suggest a community guest that you feel would be great, great addition to Everfree Northwest 2015, please fill out this form. Can't wait to see all, all the great talent that will be coming our way. You're in sample. Is that actually necessary? Damn. <laughs> you no, 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 no. Uh, don't listen to the, the audience. Don't listen to James. He's he he's okay, but not this one. No, he didn't no. pass the urine sample and he's yes. pissed about it. <laughs> oh, <sure>. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but, he's still bitter. One <laughs> time, one time, I do drugs, and so they have to catch me there. Well, oh, technically, technically, James, you did not do drugs. It was your medicine, and yeah. <laughs> Since when is marijuana medicine? Oh, wait a minute. No, in the US it is. <laughs> yeah. But, but anywho, but anywho, um, audience, if you want to do a panel at Everything Northwest, submit and hope for the best because if I was going there, I would have submit my own panel and I would do it, uh, do an NBA show live there saying that, Hey guys, we're doing a show live. Yay! But since I'm not going, you get a chance. So if you want to pretend to be me, go ahead. Yay! Not creepy at all. Who the hell will want to pretend to be you, Norman? I don't know. There are so many better choices. Well, okay, pretend to be a James Cork. Maybe people. No, see, oh my God, people would rather be Norman than be James. <laughs> Jeez. Maybe Ro? Are you serious? Oh, shut up, Ro. You are not supposed to say that I'm right. You jerk. <laughs> what kind of friend are you? A bad one, that's what you are. You gotta yeah. have those friends, you know. Honest friends. Honest friends. Oh, the, the, the friends that you want to punch in the face? That's, that's what you call a best friend. Oh, man. Nice. Uh, but anywho, but anywho, Dragenda, welcome to the show. Dr welcome to the show. Um, I I'm sure a lot of people might not know who you are and what you do. Mind introducing yourself just so people would get to know you yeah. better? I'm Dragenda. I do art, you could say. I'm a digital artist and I run the blog Ask Ace Pony, the sexual awareness pony. Also, I'm one of the artists at the Pump on the project. Mm. So, okay, um, first things first. Uh, Asexual awareness? How? How did you came up with that idea? Because there was none. <laughs> okay, valid. I checked. Valid. So, what's the blog about? It's a pink pony that's named Ace that goes around being a dork and sometimes talk about asexuality. <laughs> but that's quite the rare. But it happens. 
Okay, okay. So you you said you were part of the Aspen project. How did you got involved? Well, the Aspen sent me a message on Team in Tart and asked if we were interested, and I said yes. Hmm. Not all that epic of a tale. Okay, cool, cool. So we talked to Pan before, and the way he said things is each artist has a free range of what they want to do, how many drawings they want to pick out, and boom, you get the projects. So is that true? Yeah. There is a script database, there's a bunch of scripts. If you want to do a script, you reserve it as yours, then you do the script, and then you send it in, and... He gives you the money and yeah. Yay. So what's your favorite kind of script? I don't really have much of a favorite. Most of them does not leave a lot of room to be creative. Oh, all right, all right. Any um, featured artists or featured guests, for example, like a movie slate kind of deal where you want, oh, I want to get movie slate, so I book movie slate. Anything like that? Mm, no, I did do a movie poster once. A graduate, uh, parody, which I felt so awkward drawing, to be honest, but... Uh, Everybody has one of those moments. So, how long have you been an artist, in general? Pretty much drawn my whole life, but it did start, like, more hardcore around 14, 15, and started, like, draw daily. Ah, I see. So, what were your, your tools of the trade? Well, I started just, just with a sketchbook and a mechanical pencil. Because then I didn't have to bother about, you know, sharpening the pencil. Oh, true, 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 true. And then later I got a tablet and yeah. Oh, okay. went digital. So when did you start the digital and what was your reaction to it? I started around when I was 16, 17. And my reaction was pretty much most of everyone else. How the f- That's not a word! Do I control this thing? <laughs> Yeah. How? How? Playing, playing with the stylus at first can be really confusing. <laughs> yeah, especially when no one has actually told you that's like how it will be in the start. <laughs> so I was kind of going in blind. <laughs> so I was not expecting that. <laughs> uh, have fun. Yeah. Well, I can use it now. True, true. You, you, you got a lot of practice, so you got it much better. When it comes to doing a picture, what is the part that you struggle the most with? Because every artist has a part that uh, they don't look forward to. Um, and they are like, oh, I have to do this now. <laughs> <laughs> coloring, coloring, coloring. coloring. Uh, just basic flat coloring. It's so boring. <laughs> Shading can be a pain if it's like... A real like intensive shading you have to use hours on. It's at least like fun in the start, but coloring, never fun, always boring, always a pain. It's absolutely true what they say that um uh there is a chart that indicates the level of satisfaction of the artist with his drawing, his or his, his or her drawing, uh as it progresses it's like sketch, really satisfied, and then after you ink it, it yeah. goes in negatives. And then it it only improves once you get uh, once you get to shade it and everything. It is absolutely true now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, and when it comes to do you draw something else aside from um uh, pony stuff? Because uh, you know, okay, we're in this fandom, drawing ponies, everything. But um, we also try to uh, and keep it a bit more varied, uh, especially if we are trying to make a career in art. What uh, do you draw aside from ponies? Well, I draw like. The normal stuff I try to draw humans into. I have fallen a bit behind in practice, trying to catch up. Like, since I started Ace Ball, it, it went kind of like half a year with me not drawing a single human, which is naughty, naughty. Don't do that, artists. <laughs> Don't skip on the humans. You're going to need, like, every single minute you use on training on those. You will regret it later. Yeah. Well, there's his quest struggles, so this practice. That's not humans. Those that's things are not mutants. Humans. Those things yeah. are mutants. Uh, Those things them... are things. You could make where them they... human. Where the legs like part of and where the hips are located and they the have... head size and the head size and <laughs> they, they have bayonetta humans. anatomy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> they have the the anatomy of bayonetta. Seriously, Princess Celestia's legs go on so long that they have a toll booth at the height of the knee. <laughs> because they go on forever. Oh, like the legs kind of like are at where you would call like 
your belly button is. <laughs> they, that's kind of how their anatomy is. It's like 20 centimeters extra that should not be there. <laughs> In any logical sense, even when stylized, it's just what? <laughs> okay. Uh, what artist would you consider to be your biggest your biggest uh, influence? Not just within the fandom or the internet, but also like uh, more classic artists like, uh, I don't know, Goya, Velasquez, or like uh, any of those. To be honest, no. Really? Yeah, I never really looked at others to be like, I want to draw like that or I want to do that. I just, well, if I need something to draw I, and I don't need how to do it, I look up references, and then I look at different artists that have done it and see if I like some stylistic choices. But there's not like one name I go for. Well, well, well uh, let me rephrase the question different then, in that, uh, what was the art, uh, the artist that made you go, oh my god, I need to start drawing, I need to start painting, I need to start creating? None, I always done it. None? So. Wow. <laughs> I just always liked drawing, it was fun. So, I didn't mm. need any figure hmm. to keep me going. Not a born artist. To be honest, it's pro- my main impulse is probably that I'm left-handed. So everyone went like, oh, you're left-handed, that means you're going to be creative and artistic. <laughs> so I guess I just fulfilled the stereotype. Oh, God. <laughs> stereotype filled. Yay. Lefty power! So wait, I'm Asian, does that mean I'm good at math? No, Norman, but you're always carrying a camera with you, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it means that people expect you to be good at math, and you will try to be it to fulfill expectation, or else you'll just be lazy and don't bother. Well, I'm good at magic, per se. You're a wizard, Norman. <laughs> oh no. So He's both left-handed and a witch. I think we need to burn this guy. <laughs> Oh no, no. But um, how? Okay, here's something maybe Ro could fill in also. Um, how did you get to know Ro? Hello. Uh, I wanted to watch streams, so I searched Picardo on Tumblr and picked the stream that huh. came up. So you pick Ro out of all the people that's available. You can do a yeah, lot more. Yeah, but to be fair, <laughs> like ninety percent of those people were, were streaming, making porn. Um, so um, be happy for a slow streaming day. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why I don't stream Rule Thirty Four. Yay! <laughs> and usually it's more socially acceptable. Mm-hmm. I completely understand your okay. thinking, though. So you got them to know Rome, Rome and stuff. So how was he like? When you popped in and stuff and whatnot, and Ro, you can chime in too if you want to make continue on with the story. Okay. It was a dark and cloudy day. I was <laughs> battling off our block with my pen, with my OCs besides me. We were surrounded ten by five, and then Draganda appeared on the mountain while angels were heavenly singing <laughs> with her OCAs. She well, jumped into right, the battle. I hope. Uh, I don't <laughs> remember a dragon, dragons. but. It was badass. There was heavy metal playing in the background as we clashed into battle with the demons known as the Art Block. Wow, is this all true, Regan? Because uh, I don't, I, I can't. Well, think... it, it, it did forget the part where we battled like the wood witches and the part where we went into space and fought like aliens. I feel it's kind of sad that he didn't mention those parts. I was, I'm, I was getting to that. <laughs> so uh, you just pop into stream. Get to know him and yay. Okay. <laughs> but if you want to have a boring version, you have to tell the cops because of CSI don't want <laughs> us to tell people there's aliens out there that we beat up. It's that he was working on some sci fi commission thingy and was doing all the details, and mm. I and a friend just popped in and we were like, hey, this guy seems cool, let's watch. <laughs> so, I feel warm and fuzzy now. So did you just watch him, not talk to him, like just watch? We did some chatting, but I can't even remember much what he said. I don't think it was all that what super interesting. I always talk. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we said anything particularly interesting because I can't remember what he talked about. <laughs> yeah, you were just there and I was doing all the blabber jabber some, something something MacGyver thing. Yeah. Doing my shtick. Uh, I see. Uh, the pony fandom or the fandom in general is just way confusing. 
Not if you start to think of it as um, just a bunch of people that like colorful ponies. Uh, true. The confusion is the confusion is when we react poorly because they put wings to one of them. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, now, the... that is confusing. So, Draganda, do you stream? Yeah, sometimes, but I'm quite bad at doing it. Oh, I mean, you have Ro here to help you, so you guys could multi-stream if you want. Uh, I think it's the other way around. She always has visitors. I have, like, two or three at least. Yeah, I mean, bad is actually, like, starting a stream. I stream really rarely. (laughs) Because I'm lazy. (laughs) And I don't live alone, so I kind of have to, like, take in the factor that people constantly pop into my room. I don't have privacy. Uh... Privacy? What's that? (laughs) Yeah, what is that? Mostly because mostly because where I live is where I uh where I work and everything. It's an entire open room with no doors, so Yeah. But they do know when you're streaming so they don't pop into the camera. Oh no, even when they do. When uh they they, they know that I am. They have become really annoying as of late. Aww. In that regard, Aww. really, really, really annoying. I'll have to have a talk to them because good grief is it getting a nuisance. Not not the topic, <clears throat> but uh, when you stream, what do, do you decide the content that you're going to stream beforehand, or do you uh, wing it as uh, I streamers? decide before because I'm really bad at winging it. It's like while people are watching, I'm just going to sit there for half an hour going, uh, uh, um, how do you lines? How do you lines? How do you ink? How do you color? How do you theory? So, I tend to have like a rough sketch part of it done. I maybe like improve the sketch while on stream and you know lining and coloring and all that stuff. Okay. So have you done any commissions for your art like during streaming or whatnot? No. All like what you call commissions I've ever done and I've been pun pony project related. Mm. As they are technically commissions. Um, true, true, true. The way that Panboni does them is technically commissions. True. So yeah, I'm not all that out there. I'm just some dork sitting in a corner drawing dorks. Sometimes eating cake. Wow, I'm jelly. Like you get eat cake while drawing ponies. Oh, Celeste is gonna be so angry at you. That's why I beheaded her. Moving on. <laughs> 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 So, Ro, any questions for your best friend? Who is that adorable little changeling that's always next to your OC? There's a changeling there? Dun dun dun! It's no, appa- so it's apparently, it's totally the main character of my blog, even though it's called Ace Pony and Ace is the only one in the banner, and the side bit only really speaks about things from Ace's perspective, but apparently, it's the main character, all according to my asks. <laughs> So you were not the one who created, but it, he kind of came out of nowhere from the asks. Well, I was planning to have a Pegasus character, and I wanted to have like a little like changeling bit to sort of like prove the point that changeling in this universe were like really dangerous. But by the time I got to the changeling part, so much time has passed. I were like, I don't want to do another story right after this about introducing a Pegasus. So wait, you changed like you are not the Pegasi. So so wait, let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. Uh, you you had a story where a Pegasus is going to be following uh, Ace, but somehow it ended up with the Changeling, and that's decided by the fans. Well, no, I just well winged it and stuck some wings on it. Yeah. Okay. James, did anything like that happen to you before? Not really. <laughs> wow. I'm impressed. Like, creating a character out of the blue. <laughs> awesome. Dude, that's what I do every day. Have you seen my gallery? Yeah, like, but... I was supposed yeah. to have a character like that. It's just... I just melted two characters together. Yeah, okay. Because time and flow. True, 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 true. Where do you see yourself in ten years? This is a job interview. <laughs> oh, but you can take it if you want. <laughs> Sorry. It's just a really job interview kind of question. It is? I don't know. Yes. It is, actually. It is, it is, it is, it is. No one ever asked me when I was interviewing for jobs. Don't know. No Maybe they don't see any future on you. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so that's what they were thinking about me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I left them. I knew they were jerks. I'm really bad at seeing forward. I'm 
kind of just winging it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you say you say digital artist. Have you ever tried doing something traditional? Yeah, I did actually start out doing like the pencil drawings. I do actually still have like a million pencil sets of like different like hardness and softness. But coloring, not so much. I mm. do also do oil painting, oh, but wow. it's a time consuming. I barely do it. So have you ever well, ever wanted to do some kind of um, live stream where you do traditional art? I no idea how I would set that up. I don't really have a camera uh, yeah. that I could film. Well, Citra does that from time to time, and it's pretty interesting the way he does things like set up camera, phone stuff, and whatnot. You could just set up your webcam and point it at a piece of paper. Yeah. My webcam is stuck to the computer screen, so that will kind of become hard. Oh, one of those. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Those are annoying. Yeah. I know, but I never use it. It's just there. Well, well, at least it's something, right? 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 There's no way I will be able to set it up, so... Yeah. That will have to be in the far future when I somehow magically get a camera of some sort. Mm, true, 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 true. I, I, I hope you do get a camera. Like, people who do traditional art are awesome. And especially you doing oil paintings. That is going to be awesome if you stream it, like, uh, time lapse it. That'll be so cool. Like, oil painting is ridiculously slow art making. Yeah, still, people, like to see art or like to see the progression of a uh, creation so yeah who knows doubt it's much of an audience but yeah, never know true 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 but anyway i have run out of questions anyone else questions no yes no i think i'm pretty much uh ask everything that might have come uh by my head thank you for answering them though you're welcome Thank you, Draginda, for coming on and answering all, all our random questions and even the crazy job interview ones. Well, I never really answered it all that much, but yeah. yeah. I hope we ask you all the good questions that we can ask because right now we're just winging it. Get it? Get it? Winging it because Pegasus. Norman, quiet. <laughs> speak, speak, speak quiet now. Oh. But anyway. Ro, next topic, yes. news time. Your turn to read the long news that you did this yeah. week because I did not do it. Your turn. Yes. Not only did I do the, no, the read news, this time I actually did it. So bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a tough one. It's time for the MBS News Time with your host with the most, Romuald. In today's news, going down to Brooklyn downtown, St. Francis College in Brooklyn will be hosting the third annual conference of Pole PonyCon. The conference will have panels such as How to Draw Pony, How to Write a Fanfic, and it is said there will be screening the ever-so-waited Season 5 trailer. PonyCon will take place in St. Francis College, located at 180 Remsen Street in downtown Brooklyn, USA. Has any other convention announced the screening of Season 5 yet? Uh, no other convention, but this is reminiscent of when the first Bronicon happened and they aired the second episode of Season 2. Uh... So... Good times. This this feels like it's going to be a fun event to go to. Yeah. Sucks that one of the few times that I feel bad for not being American. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Forever conless. Oh. Forever conless. New, Drugina, we created a new meme. Drugina, where are you? Where are you now? At home. I mean, uh, location. What is home? <laughs> yeah. What is home? Country, country. Where do you? Where, oh, where do the you set the hand? I live in Norway. Norway. Oh. Norway! I actually live in Spain. <laughs> Only no. heard a joke five times today. <laughs> no way! <laughs> Six, Six. Oh, really? <laughs> no, we, we're gonna cut that one out. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm the region that works for the Pen Poly Project. What do you think I hear all day? <laughs> Norway. Oh, God. Seven! <laughs> No, now that knowing that pun project is like doing that to you all the time, I feel bad for you now. <laughs> Not really. You should. Uh, but no, seriously. My first problems. <laughs> uh, but anywho, but, but anywho, um, this con 
not only has the screening of the season 5 trailer, it also has special guests like Vincent Tong going in there and also um, McKay Shorkett, was it? The voice for Sunset Shimmer. Anybody Rebecca remember? Rebecca Shimmer. Rebecca Shorkett. Yeah. 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 I can never pronounce her second name. I'm so sorry. Yeah, and she's also going to be there. So that's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. So talking about Vincent Tong. Friendship Express doubts crowdfunding for Flash Century. The opportunities for the show staff to make it to an Asian convention is a bit lower than those in the U.S. and Canada. But thanks to the magic of the internet, that doesn't mean they can't say hello to fans all over the world. As the Friendship Express is beginning crow crowdfunding to get Skype call with Vincent Tong, the voice of Flash Century, and more. Yep, yep. If you guys got no idea what's the Friendship Express, it's Malaysia's first ever My Little Pony convention. And yep, it's going. It's run by our main man, Daniel Anthony. He is pulling this off. He's going to try and get Vincent Tong, the guy who does Flash Century, Waifu Stealer, on Skype to talk to the audience. Like, this is just nuts. Even when Daniel is trying to do something nice and good, he's trying to troll people anyway, because look <laughs> yes, at that. He's trying to get the wife of Steeler. He's trying to get, he's trying to get the most single-handedly hated character in the entire fan. Well, okay, no. By the way, unfair. Unfair. I yeah. actually for once like Flash Sentry a lot, mostly because he's just a harmless little guy yeah, who true. has no consequence whatsoever. So, yeah, I mean, uh, God, I wish, I wish I could help with this crowd, crowdfunding. Um, I'm just so counted when it comes to pennies. I'm pen, I'm penny punching right now. True. I feel uh, like that. Completely, completely unable to get anything else but to pay the bills. Yeah, I understand. But that. I'm gonna see if I, I'm gonna see if I can throw them a, uh, a few, uh, toss them a few bucks. Yeah. Every and convention could use a bit more of waifu stealer. True that, true that. And if I do remember right, they need to get 1k American, so that's $1,000 to get Vincent Tong on. Don't ask me why they need that much money. I'm not in the meeting. Even though Dan's a part of the show, I'm not in the meeting. So, yay. So yeah, do support them. If it's a good cause, it's to get Vincent Tong onto a Asian convention so yay much yays anywho next Any one many yays. Yeah, yay next mm, one row. roger that and in the other news galak them all what's your favorite to do in the fandom creating music inspired by sh the show writing fanfics or collecting figurines and plushies Sky Edwards, an 18-year-old college student, managed to spend over a whopping 1,000 pounds, or $1,523, on plushy t-shirts and little figurines of the My Little Pony characters that she probably placed on display throughout her entire room. Back in 2011 is when Sky fell in love with the flowing rainbow-colored ponies, and by the end of that same year, managed to spend approximately 100 pounds on 30 ponies alone. And how much did you spend on Spony Swag? I got no idea. I spent on a lot of ponies. A lot of doing pony swags. Oh god. But honestly speaking, um, a person and their collection, some people say that it's waste of money that you could put it in something better. But, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but, but, okay, hear me out, hear me out. No, but, no, no, I, I'll, let, I'll let you finish, but I have such a counter argument, uh, to what people think is a waste of money and time. But go ahead, right. Norman, finish right. your dissertation. The fact of the matter is, Sky Edward here, she's a dedicated fan of the show. She's willing to collect the money and buy her toys just to collect them and just have fun with them. Like, I'm looking at it right now and she has such an awesome collection. It would Twilight NLR to shame. And not to mention the shirts. Wow, she has a collection. Uh, James, what about you? What, what do you have to say, man? Yeah, what I wanted to say is that um, putting money to, be to best use, when you are running tight on a budget and you cannot spend a lot of money on something, you have to be very careful with what you spend the money on when you're a fan of uh, a thing. For example, if you were a fan of Todd McFarlane toys or something like that, those toys are super pricey. 
They were, I'm speaking about like thirty dollars or something per one of the figurines that Todd McFarlane made. However, these pony toys they are like five dollars each. They are affordable. They're pretty and they resemble the characters in the show fairly well. So th- that is a budgetary reason to why people rather buy a pony toy than um, something a bit more quote unquote detailed or badass. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is that sometimes you look at it and you say, for this money, I could buy a single toy of this line, or I could buy six ponies. I'm going to buy six ponies. Or I'm going to buy one and save the money for another five. True. Which is something that not many people, uh, it's something that not many people see. Uh, that's why I don't buy, like, uh, that's why I haven't been able to buy any of the other Pacific Rim robots. It's because they are super expensive. However, I have a bunch of pony toys because they are very cheap mm-hmm. and easy to afford. So the only the, the hardest part about owning pony swag, if you're a guy, for example, is uh, going down the pink aisle. But if you can master the energy and internet. the ability to go, yeah, the, the internet, <laughs> internet as well. Shopping to internet, the rescue. <laughs> internet as well. Internet helps. Mm. Oh, but it's the name of a guy. Oh, it's okay. It's for my niece. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, not only that, but when you also buy something made by the fans, like you buy uh, a pony plush that uh, the fans have made, or like, uh, uh, I don't know, a, a, a cushion, a craft or something, a bracelet, a pendant, uh, whatever, and it's made by the fans, you're also supporting someone else and their craft. That is good. That That keeps not only the community going, but that keeps that person going for a few more days of the month. Because usually when it's like when it's like when you commission somebody for a piece of artwork, you are helping them pay the bills. So in the end, that also that that also helps others, helps individuals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's uh, basically what I'm trying to say with all this: is that buying pony swag is a good thing mm-hmm. for both for both Hasbro and the fandom. True that. True that. Hasbro owns Wizard of the Coast, oh, yeah. which is a famous for having the biggest selling, most addicting legal. That's not a word. That exists. <laughs> yeah. So, to be evil, I go. And I'm saying this as someone that does actually play Magic the Gathering. You play too? Uh, Are you playing KTK? No, I'm. Well, I'm going to try to back down off my habits, so I'm staying in the commander zone. Oh, the cash on. command. Okay, have you bought the 2014 Commander? Because I bought blue. There we go. <laughs> I haven't bought I haven't bought the Commander one, but I so am into Magic the Gathering as well. And yes, no. I have spent so much money on that on that cardboard cardboard crack. Cra- cardboard crack. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, here's the story. Here's the story. Um, last week, I was taking photos for my friend who owns a magic shop, and the payment method that we agreed upon was. A hundred ringgit local currency that would be thirty bucks, your American, and a fat pack, essentially nine packs inside the box. So yeah, I sold myself for nine packs of Magic the Gathering and thirty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, yeah. <laughs> you are selling yourself short. You at least work five more packs. I know, but I don't care. I got packs. I got fetch lands, and they're pretty rare. Polluted Delta for the win. Yay! <laughs> Oh, Norman. <laughs> what? I, I have problems. Yes, you do. But you don't want to admit it, so you will never be able to fix them. Hey, I, I admitted it, but I'm not going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but still... Oh, Dragenda, you and me, Commander, soon. I'm going to mill you out. <laughs> yes, mill out to the 99 card deck. <laughs> oh, I can. I can. <laughs> But anyway. evil commander, can you made it? I thought it was supposed to be casual there. <laughs> Trust me, if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, and my deck is really so. Uh, cool. I can't remember what the color combination is called. It's uh, black, red, green, oh. and pretty much, and the giant dragon that just comes and punches you with commander damage, and then I make a billion tokens and then punch you with like five billion wolves. <laughs> Wow, that's evil. Wow, yeah, James, make her stop. And then, and then, but, but no, what? Ha- Shut up, Norman. I'm recording. <laughs> and, then, 
when you cast your AOE spell to kill all the wolves, I will sacrifice them all and throw them into a giant beast that becomes like an 800 <laughs> They trample. Jerk. There is no mercy in my command zone. <laughs> Get out of my show, you big meanie. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, but anywho, yay, um, Skylar Edwards, keep it up, keep your collection up, and be proud of it, because you are doing what you love, and no one else is going to stop you, because you enjoyed it. Just make sure to not become a hoarder, like, <laughs> idiot space, to live. Yeah, true that, true that. Like, sell those, or throw away those, or... Give the chair to a favorite those <laughs> that you don't want anymore to make sure you have space. Yeah, also that, also that. Like, uh, or just buy a bigger house. Up through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's... They could work. Just keep, just keep by your bigger house so it doesn't look like you're a hoarder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> By comparison. <laughs> they could work. Perfect plan. Mm, yeah. We got it. Quite. Oh, God. And this has been the news time of MES show with your host, Relicious. Back to you, Norman. Thank you so much, Dero. Thank you so much, Dero. So, uh, like I, uh, like I always mention every week about how to contact us on the show. Like I always say, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow at gmail dot com. And if you'd like to email us personally, you can reach us. Well, links are in the show notes. And you know what? Someone did. Someone finally did it. And Ro, well, we have you... had a couple of emails before, dude. Don't be oh. unfair to the people that have emailed us. Before. True that. I'm sorry, other emailers. I'm sorry. And well, for 2015, this is the first. And you know what, bro? Take a step at it. All right, letter time. Hey, guys of the MBS show. First of all, congratulations on reaching the milestone of 150 episodes. Can't wait for the three-year anniversary. <laughs> it's been a lovely time ever since the beginning. I like what you guys did in episode 149 with questions. I wanted to also give you some questions. Question one. What are your favorite fandom artists? Hmm. Well, well, that would be me, myself, and I. <laughs> well, you get this too much. Well, honestly speaking for me, I would have to say James. Ha! No, honestly. You're, man. Su- you're suck up. You are such a suck up. <laughs> oh, come on. Honestly, man. Okay, like... what do you want me to draw you? Another title card? Watch Come on, I'll say. Come on, I'll say. No, okay. Um, but, get, get out. No, but honestly speaking, you put a lot of work into it, man. Like, I always mention this to you. Your backgrounds are the boss. You put a lot of detail into backgrounds where people don't really notice them. But you do a lot of good hard work. And that is... I appreciate that, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, oh, you don't believe me. Yeah, boo. I, uh, no, it's hard for me to take compliments. I don't want to, I don't want to get drunk with, like, you know. <laughs> Power? Oh Power. my god, you're so great. Ah, oh, and I'm like, no, shut up. I, just, I don't believe you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, other artists, like, um, other artists who draw and stuff, like, uh, I would have to say, Fuffle Mixer. He's the guy who does Fufflepuff. The concept itself is simple, yet the execution is funny and good. Love it. Love it so much. And another one recently added to the crew of pony artists, not well known, Puffy Smosh. Her art is cute. I have to say, her art is cute. And I like it. And also Antikola Pony, he's senpai. Me, I say more. What about you, James? Atril, 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 and Atril. Uh, <laughs> it's very easy to mock anybody who says, oh, my favorite artist is Atril, because people immediately think, Rule 34, fun, Rule 34, fun. No. The reason why I love Atril is because his concept of lighting and shading is just unbelievable. Uh, the, the speed at which he draws and paints is inhuman. He is a superhero of artists everywhere. And I wish I could have his thinking skills. Um, he is the kind of person that I really, he, I, you know, I'm a, a joke with Auntie as well, with Anticular Pony, with the, oh, Senpai, Senpai, Senpai. But it's all joking and everything. To me, Atriel is, is, he's my true Senpai. <laughs> like, I will, I will go completely gaga the day that Atriel decides to check, uh, check out my art. 
and give me advice on how to improve it. Or he could ask you for advice. <laughs> I don't think Adriel ever needs me to uh, uh, for advice. You never know. Uh, because, no, Adriel is really good in almost every single aspect. Super Almost. I don't know. Yeah, because I don't know him as a person yet. But the attitude he has, the way that he draws, the way that he behaves with other people, and the things that he has to put up with. What a patient, fantastic, professional artist. Indeed. What about you, Ro? Oh, there's a lot of artists I'm admiring and wish to become as great as them one day. I really can't say if I have a special artist that I like, admire the most. I see. I'm, I view a lot of artists more as teachers than idols, because there's always something new to, to learn from each and every one of them. Hmm, that's a good philosophy. That's a good philosophy. And Draginda, you none? Yeah, it's pretty much the same as we're from. I'm just. I will look at art that I will like, but I pretty much never like look up who made it and what all the work they've done. Aww. I'm too lazy. Except for that, I look upon who made this masterpiece. Mm. Oh. Because I want to know who is this legend <laughs> and does he take any apprentices? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm too lazy for that. And I don't have time. I have to draw. I can't go and look up what other people have been drawing. I need to draw myself. I don't have time for this. <laughs> Nobody got time for I'm, that. I'm wasting precious drawing time. <laughs> Indeed. Alright. Next question. Which part of the fandom, art, merch, people, etc., do you like the most? Oh, wow. I don't know. I mean, this fandom is big. You have the musicians, the artists, the streamers, the Skype chat people. You, there, there's a lot of aspect to this. But I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't dare say what I expect, I like, oof, which part do I like the most? I, I don't know. To me, it's everything because the other reason that I got into the show was because of the fandom and how creative they are. And getting to know some of the people here, like you guys, you guys are the most awesomest people I've ever chatted with. You guys are so nice. You guys are very helpful. You, you guys, surprise me with how awesome you guys can be. So, I, I just have to say everything. Getting to know people and getting to meet them in person. Like, I met James. I've heard his voice for, what, almost half a year now and meeting him in person is like, wow, this is the face behind the voice. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, what about you, man? I guess the closeness of it. How easy it is to start a conversation with almost anybody at any time because you know, when you're in other fandoms you can be a fan of many other things. Uh, best example of them all is like when you're in the furry fandom you can be a fan of anything that has to do with furries and that is so wide is like Star Fox or Digimon or Inuyasha mm -hmm. or any other thing that has to do with anthropomorphic animals. Sonic. And you have some some fans fighting other fans or getting over other fans, like saying, oh, this one is better, this one's better, this one's better. In the pony fandom, at least, we all know that we are fan, we are all fans of Friendship is Magic. It's more focused, and that makes it for easier conversations. Besides, I have never had an argument with anybody in a serious manner about who is best pony. Because wow. we are very self-aware of what we like. That is the other thing that I really like about this fandom, how self-aware we are. It's like, dude, color pastel horses. I know, right? Oh, yeah. Is <laughs> You're fighting the whole thought... fandom in this, almost. <laughs> who, who is most self-aware? <laughs> who would have thought? And, and, yeah, I know, right? Pink, yeah. <laughs> Going down the pink aisle, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh... it's, it, 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 that, that is the absolute best part. True that, true that. Bro? Well, obviously, it's going to be the art part. There are many talented artists who, like, explode with creativity and awesomeness all over their canvases. And the musical part, because, damn, I love that bass banging on my speakers. <laughs> <laughs> I just right. love music. I'm a music addict, man. Some people can't go for out a day without a smoke. I can't go without a beat drop. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And the community has delivered many of them, which makes me a very happy person. And, Draginda, you? Well, my favorite part that kind of weird is actually this fandom's really good at self-policing. 
Oh, really? No. This is saying from the perspective of someone that's part of many fandoms, and pretty much all of them, when there's like someone being like weird or messed up or just like being a buskill for everyone, people just ignore them, push them away, mm. and just like don't mention they exist. They just pull it away. Well, bros actually like call people out on their BS, mm. which will sort of improve it all over. And over. Of course, there are dark parts, but even they tend to be like they tend to behave. Even the darker parts. Hmm. That that is true. That is true. Hmm. Well, a lot of other fandoms I will not mention and names, but um, you could need some self policing work there. <laughs> true that. True. <laughs> and that. actually, call people out when they're behaving like. That's not a word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And last questions. What are your thoughts on the fandom future, and do you see yourself in it? Oh, wow. The future, eh? What are your thoughts of the... No, the fandom... To me, the fandom will never die. It's always be there. It's just the fans. Because some people treat this as a fling or a gimmick or some kind of fab where they they're in it because it's ironically funny and I just want it I just want to join the bandwagon because it's funny. Some people treat it as hey this is really serious. This is telling a really good message and I want in. For an example for a good example is the Star Wars fandom. How many movies had it come out and there's still a lot of fans or the Star Trek fandom or even one of the really obscure um, Stargate SG-1 there's still fans for that too or even Firefly so to me uh-huh. <laughs> the fandom will still live on it's just the fans will well, come and go and as for me I don't know I I like to believe that I'll always be a fan of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic because of all the good things that happen ever since I joined and all the good times and all the good friends I've met so I owe a lot to the show because without the show I I don't think I'll be this happy with my experience in life so yeah (laughs) I'll think I'll see uh, like I said I think I'll still see myself as a fan of the show James? I have been a fan of many things for many years and I didn't stop liking those. Even if I am not active in those fandoms as much as I am in the MLP fandom, sure, you can totally see myself still being in there, doing them pictures, talking with the people, talking with my friends, going to conventions. There is no point to stop doing something just because the show will stop being aired, which, sooner or later, guys, it's going to end. The fact that MLP is going to reach a 100 episodes Episodes, it's unheard of. The very first Hasbro show to reach a 100 episodes. And beyond that, I think we're going to reach 100 episodes in episode 4 or 5 or season 5. That is, that is, that is a, that is something that hasn't happened until now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so, yeah, I can totally see myself in it and I can see the fandom still surviving. Like you said, the Firefly fandom still is going. It, it's still going, and it was only 13 episodes. <laughs> 13 episodes, and a movie. A very crappy movie, by the way. Well, to be but... fair, the Firefly fandom is kind of fueled by the rage of it getting cancelled. <laughs> it's kind of like the in joke at this point. <laughs> well, they are fueled by hatred. <laughs> well, you see, it, uh, not to make this conversation suddenly about Firefly, but the reason why there are still fans of it compared to other Josh Whedon shows is because the show didn't go on for long enough for the show to start sucking. Mm, true, true. Which yeah. is the problem with every single Josh Whedon series out there. True, 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 true. And Ro? I see myself being adopted by the Doctor. What? And then we got one of the crazy adventure of the galaxies. But no, seriously. I I... would like to talk about that. (laughs) Yes. Anyway, I share the same same view as you, Norman. The show must go on. Okay. Nice and sweet. Uh, Drigenda, you? Well, I see it as when the show ends, like, the fandom will, like, go down, like, steadily. But it won't go away. It's kind of like 20% will get removed every year, but it will never reach zero. Kind mm. of math. All right, all right, all right. And, well, 
I won't stop being a fan. I probably won't be as active in it. But like, if I see a pony picture, I'll be like, oh, cool, a pony, so cute. I, I can relate. I, I think I'm with that with Kim Possible. Like, there's no art now and there's nothing new. But whenever something new does pop out, I say, ooh, this is cool. Yeah, pretty much like that. <laughs> and Ro, the last question. In the last question, why is the NBA show so awesome and inspirational? Uh, well, that's, that's obvious. You got question. me in it. And you got James. James is very inspirational. Hmm. Yes. No, can I give you an answer to that? Yeah, go ahead. Because there is nothing else to compare it to. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, yeah, we're we're kind of original in our standpoint and our point of view. I think we're the only show that has a positive standpoint on things. For example, Hasbro done something wrong. We say, hey, it's their IP. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. And we do a review show called MBS Show Reviews. Very original. And we don't rip episodes or comics apart because they're bad. We talk about them. We do discuss them and see what we like about them. Because nothing is really bad except for the cowboy arc. And... We try our best to see the good Except things. Except for Spike episodes. Um, yeah, that's unfair. <laughs> that's totally unfair. And I, I think we look things a bit differently and we take the positives. Would you agree with me, James? I agree. So, I don't know why we're awesome and why we're inspirational, but all I have to say is that we're ourselves. We do what we like and we believe in ourselves and our point of view. Doesn't mean that it's right, but doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just us being us. And you, Ro? Like I said, we're running this place. <laughs> uh, what do you mean by that, man? We're not a mafia, so... No one else could do this job better than us. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people can, can do this better than us, man. <laughs> the statement is under question until proven otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> ah... But Dragon, first time here, what do you think about us? Hmm. Besides us being a bunch of goofballs. <laughs> I already had an opinion before I came here, so... <laughs> it's not like anything changed. So we're a bunch of goofballs, then, eh? Yeah, <laughs> a bunch of dorks. <laughs> hey, I'll take it, I'll take it. <sighs> anyway, bro, finish up the email. You're a loyal fan, Puffy. P.S. Lollies love bananas and hail John Delancey. <laughs> Oh, you puffy. Like I said, number one fan. But anyway, like I mentioned before, you can send an email at com, And you can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. Sudibot will... Hmm. What will Sudibot do? I don't see her do much this week. Hmm. I forgot to replace her batteries! Oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, replace them, bro. And you can also reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy, which is going to be magic because, yeah, I have a problem. James? You can find me on Tumblr, on askmoviesleague.tumblr.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Ro? And you can find me at Twitter, relicious underscore art. Okay, cool. And Dragenda, where can they find you? You can find me at uh, Ask East Pony on Tumblr and also my mob blog, The Dragenda, also on Tumblr. Also, I have a DM dart I never use. <laughs> you should use it. You so just ignore that one. <laughs> you should use it, man. You should use it. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we do have the Facebooks. You can also catch us on PonyvilleLive.com. Links will be provided in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been a, a Spanish person. I am and always will be relicious. And I'm a Viking in a storm. <laughs> Oh man. So we'll see you next week with um more puns, I hope. No way. Yay, no. Uh, uh, that, that didn't even make sense in what you said before. I'm bad. Oh anyway, see you guys. Bye. And we'll see you on the next podcast. Bye bye. Have a good one guys. <laughs>